this time it's just a two and a half hour drive to Atlanta. I'm not getting on a flight today. But okay, uh, today's interview of the day. Again, did not have to fly out for this because thankfully he's at Emory. What's but up? what's up, Rahul? Andy, it's been a pleasure uh, spending the day with you. Uh, Can't believe we're neighbors right next door. I know, right? <laughs> uh, but your Pete's critical care fellow, PGY6. PGY6, yeah. Yep. Can't believe it. <laughs> but you also have an amazing passion for USMLE mentorship, right? Yeah, I uh, over the past probably seven years, I've been really passionate about helping students optimize test taking for uh, both step one, step two CK, really focusing on uh, integrating content and uh, delivering all the material in a very active recall way so that we can kind of think like the test maker and crush these step exams. Um, check, this, check this out. <laughs> so you know he's legit. And so I am pre USMLEs right All now. Right. Uh, the only USMLE type stuff is yeah. my shell so far. Okay. Uh, I take step one and two in 2023. Woo. So it's I going to be, be a busy year for you. Yes. <laughs> but I would love for you to walk me through your thought process of going through a question. Yeah. And I think for you guys All out right. there, uh, we'll take you along and uh, let's see if you can answer this question. So I'm either going to look really smart or really dumb, let's hope it's the uh, first one. You'll do absolutely fine here. So today we got a 13 year old boy brought into the ED because three day history of progressive fatigue, uh, SOB, difficulty to walk upstairs, been well until one week ago, developed rhinorrhea, cough, sore throat, uh, resolved spontaneously two days ago, no uh, history of serious illness, no meds, on arrival, pale, moderate respiratory distress. That's never good. Uh, pulse 120, uh, respiration is 25, BP 80 over 40. Uh, I had an old uh, pulm <laughs> pulmonologist who said, any number that you get in the 40s is bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, respiratory rate 40s, bad. Heart rate 40s, bad. Any sort of BP 40s, bad. Any lab value in the 40s, bad. Yeah, so, uh, except your CO2, because that yes. should be around 40. Yes, exactly. So. <laughs> Uh, that's not good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, pulse ox, 91% uh, on room air. Okay. Um, on the physical exam, pulm exam, crackles throughout lung fields, cars, uh, gallop is heard, soft S1, grade two S6, high pitch holosystolic murmur, heard best at the apex. Murmur all, questions are tough. All physicians take money. All right. Um, and the remainder of the exam shows no abnormalities which is the most likely diagnosis. Again, you guys are probably seeing what's on, what are the answer choices. Yeah. All right, so. What do you um, think? So I, I'm curious, just uh, as someone who mentors, what is the pertinent information that you think is like the, the things that are guiding what the test makers are trying to make this student yeah. think? Honestly, um, Believe it or not, a lot of these NBME style uh, questions, uh, as well as UWorld questions, they're uh, written in a pretty similar format. Um, I like to go through three steps for every single question, and that just keeps me uh, systematic uh, when approaching a question. So I use three steps, stem, paraphrase, and predict. So I will actually start with which of the following is the most likely diagnosis, because that's the stem. And I think the most important uh, part of this is to paraphrase. And when you're paraphrasing, you're basically going line by line. And for step two CK questions in particular, what you're trying to do is build a working diagnosis or build a work in, working uh, pathophysiologic mechanism that's going on so that you can answer consistent stems such as, got it? Uh, consistent uh, stems, uh, such as uh, what is the most likely diagnosis, as well as what's the most likely uh, next best step in management, which is all about the shelf and step two CK, you get those uh, okay. stems. And then finally, before going into the answer choices down here, I like to predict and um, get a little bit of an idea as to what I should be looking for. So summary, stem, paraphrase, and predict, okay? okay. Yep. All right, so going through this line by line, number one, whenever I see a diagnosis uh, stem. 
I always say I need to find a pathophysiologic mechanism. Why? Because a diagnosis is just like a proper noun or a vocab word that is related to an underlying pathophysiologic mechanism. So that's what I'm gonna kind of be thinking of as I paraphrase, which is the next step. Okay. So here you uh, correctly said 13 year old boy, emergency department, three day history of progressive fatigue, shortness of breath and difficulty walking upstairs. Now this ends up being the chief complaint. And yep. in the chief complaint, what you really want to do is start coming up with a differential or even isolating the organ systems yep. that are involved. So uh, what organ systems do you so think are involved? So we're thinking like cardiopulm. Yeah, exactly. You're absolutely correct. So you're going to be thinking about things like heart failure. You're going to be thinking about uh, things such as pneumonia. Maybe yep. you're going to be thinking of a myopathy because there's some muscle uh, issues. Yep. Absolutely. All right. So he'd been well until one week ago when he developed rhinorrhea, cough, and uh, sore throat. How do you think that that kind of relates into this? So it's a previous recent illness. Yeah. And then especially you're looking to see if it's resolved spontaneously or it's still going on. Um, and then you're looking at what symptoms were there. Yep. So you're looking at kind of like a upper respiratory infection type picture yeah. um, that resolved on its own. Exactly. And you're absolutely correct that you want to look at what a prodrome or a trigger is in a question because that may help you garner what's in the chief complaint. Mm -hmm. All right. So what about this one? He has no serious illness and no medications. Um, honestly, whenever you see this in an exam question, um, it is really important to isolate that as a pertinent negative. Now, pertinent negatives in exam questions start with no negative and normal. And why they're put in the exam question is to stray you away from a certain diagnosis. So okay. for example, this isn't medication induced cardiopulm problem. This isn't like an acute on chronic uh, type of issue that this patient has. Okay. All right, so do you, what do you think when you're looking at the physical exam and his vital signs, uh, sick or not sick? Uh, very sick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, honestly, whenever I see hypotension and tachycardia, um, do you know one word starts with an S that you say? Shock. Exactly. Sometimes on call <laughs> I say shit, but uh, uh, absolutely you should say shock. And you know, sometimes your shock questions are going to be the easiest on your step two CK and shelf exams uh, because a lot of the next best step in management for shock questions are going to be airway, breathing, circulation. Mm -hmm. um, and so right now we're talking about a diagnosis, but just to kind of keep in mind for other stems. So as you notice, like the crackles are there and a gallop is heard. So does that stratify more towards cardiac or palm? Um, a gallop is definitely more uh, cardiac. Yeah, so. exactly. And anytime I see crackles in the physical exam, I know that it's fluid or fibrosis. Yeah. And so like going back to like that pathophysiologic mechanism, what you're worried about here is a child that probably has some LV dysfunction and it's probably LV systolic dysfunction. Mm -hmm. He has high uh, LA pressures as the blood is uh, backing up. Yep. It also is kind of stretching the mitral valve annulus here. And that's why you're seeing a holosystolic murmur that kind of mimics uh, mitral regurgitation because the blood is going LV through the regurgitant mitral valve, then LA back into mm -hmm. the pulmonary veins, causing increased capillary hydrostatic pressure. And now you're hearing the crackles. And remember that like just from a little step one tie-in, this is more of a transudative uh, process yep. uh, because it's changes in hydrostatic yep. pressure. It's fluid buildup. Yep, exactly. So. You got it. Um, remainder of the exam, no abnormalities, no negative and normal. What are those called? Pertinent? Pertinent negatives. There you go, so. exactly. So what's your prediction going in? So um, for shock, Honestly, I, when I was doing the, like, all physicians take money, yeah. you know, having a holosystolic murmur uh, at an apex, um, holosystolic, because I spent some time on the cards for ward yeah typically a signal for uh regurg yep yep and that means some sort of val valvular dif dysfunction especially a 13 year old boy with a viral upper uri yeah prodrome you're thinking hmm d is looking pretty tempting okay because my mitral uh valve is most affected in uh rheumatic fever yeah so um i i think that i would also be uh very drawn to d um, remember that when it comes to rheumatic fever, you want to be thinking about like your Jones criteria, like mm -hmm. joint pains, any sort of carditis, whether that's endocarditis all the way to myo or pericarditis. Yep. Uh, you want to be uh, thinking of uh, any painful nodes, erythema marginatum or uh, Sinehams chorea. In this case, there's not many data points that may support that. And it's very isolated to the systolic dysfunction with the prodrome of URI uh, symptoms.
Um, so I think the best answer here, and uh, I hope I'm not wrong in this, but the best answer I think is myocarditis. myocarditis. Okay. Uh, just because uh, sometimes uh, infections such as Coxsackie B, uh, as well as uh, even adenovirus, yeah. they can cause this URI prodrome, and then you get signs of heart failure. So okay. uh, I think that's uh, that's the best answer. But I would be down to two, and uh, would be considering rheumatic okay. fever as well. So what would be pushing you away from rheumatic fever? Yeah, no, I think um, rheumatic fever definitely is a great differential. Um, one thing that I uh, recognize is that this patient doesn't necessarily have a past medical history to suggest recurrent streptococcal infections. Okay. So children with rheumatic fever are maybe in test questions, they'll say immigrant, immigrant uh, sore throats that gotcha. haven't uh, been amenable to uh, antibiotic uh, therapy. And then obviously we haven't clinched any of the uh, other major Jones uh, criteria. Okay. Yeah, it's a learning, learning point for me. And yeah. also it shows like, Hey, I'm still learning too. Yeah, so. no, no. It's definitely like such a learning process. And uh, I think the big thing here is to really recognize uh, shock and uh, certain triggers and exam questions. Absolutely. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much. I hope much. this was helpful. Uh, yes. <laughs> Sorry about helpful. all the nerd talk. <laughs> no, that at least I understand. I don't know if you guys yeah. understood it at all. But it was definitely interesting to me. I'm probably going to leave here and do more questions anyway, so this is a great warm-up for my brain, oh. uh, and also a reminder that I need to study. So, Stay thank positive you. through the grind. I know you thank got you so, it, man. <laughs> thank you so much. If you guys haven't seen the 73 question interview uh, with Raul, it will be up by the time this vlog goes out. All right. Uh, and also, if you are interested in USMLE tutoring and courses, uh, highguru.com. Yeah, highguru.com. Uh, and... Uh, Really uh, excited. I, I try to get back to uh, as many students, so uh, feel free to connect with me. And uh, I do want to also uh, let you all know, I ended up uh, starting a podcast as well yeah. uh, because I'm inspired by this guy oh, right stop. here. <laughs> stop. But uh, pickyou.com call. Uh, it's been an awesome journey so far to learn the podcasting space. For sure. And I will uh, definitely be hitting up highguru.com in January 2023. Oh, God. So. Good to see you, man. Thank you for All having right, me. All right, man.